So this year in trial practice, uh, which is the area that I'll be discussing today, we had a variety of interesting cases that can help those who try cases and also those who simply just litigate cases. Uh, one of the area that I'd like to start talking about is a case called Cromwell that is on page four of the outline. There were a variety of issues in that case, but the issue that I want to talk about is the issue of consolidating multiple cases. And we've all had those cases that come into our office. Somebody gets into a motor vehicle crash, and then they have a second motor vehicle crash. Multiple trip and falls, or maybe they have a trip and fall, a motor vehicle crash, and then go to the hospital and malpractice is committed against them. And we think to ourselves, okay, well, this is all going to be joined together. It's got to be. And most of the time it is. But in fact, there are exceptions to this. And we must take this into account because sometimes it's a lot better for us to have our cases separate, particularly in situations if we've got a nice, clean-cut liability case, whether it's a, a labor law case, a trip and fall, or motor vehicle crash, and then we have a med mal. Combining a med mal with a trip and fall or a motor vehicle crash, as you, many of you know who've had that happen, can be an utter mess. It can drag a case on for years, all of a sudden you go from having one defense counsel to now maybe having two, three, four, or even five. And what happens is sometimes you think, well, is it even worth bringing this medical malpractice case if we have such a good liability case? Because we figure it's going to get consolidated. Well, the situation in Cromwell, which is a case that comes out of Kings County, was a situation where there was a trip and fall case. Here are the facts of that case. The case involved a plaintiff who tripped and fell in a rodent hole. We don't know what type of rodent. The court didn't say, but obviously a rodent that was big enough to create a hole that this plaintiff tripped in. The plaintiff tripped. The hole was there. There was good evidence, good evidence of it, good evidence of notice. All around, a fairly solid trip and fall case. About a year after the trip and fall case was brought, the plaintiff in that action then brought a medical malpractice case against the hospital where the plaintiff was taken to, to the emergency room after the trip and fall. Now all of a sudden, it gets a little murkier. Are these going to be brought together? Well, the case has actually sat parallel, working their way through discovery. The plaintiff's attorney didn't want them brought together, and the defendants didn't move. The note of issue was filed, and about nine months after the note of issue, as it's working its way through JCP, a defendant moves to consolidate the cases and says, well, obviously this arises from the same incident, comparable injuries, it's all got to be together. And I know there are many of us out there that would think, yeah, that's, I'm not going to win this motion. But the plaintiff in this case opposes it, opposes the motion, and the motion is actually denied. The cases are kept separate. The defendant in that case takes it up to the second department, where the second department affirms keeping the cases separate. And the second department reminds us of the law that we often forget, that cases are not necessarily ripe for consolidation if there are several present factors. One of them, are there common facts? Common facts between the med mal and in this case the trip and fall. Are there dissimilar issues or legal theories? In a trip and fall, you have theories regarding negligent maintenance or negligent uh, or cause and create. Clearly, in the med mal, you don't have that. You have departures against doctors. The other factor, the third factor, is there a prejudice to the party? Is there a prejudice to a plaintiff or to a defendant if you have this all lumped together? And lastly, would this confuse a jury? If you had all of this together, a road and hole and, and property managers, and now you've got ER doctors and experts, would this get very confusing for a jury that they'd throw their hands up and say, I don't know what's going on here? Would the litigation become unwieldy? That's actually what the rule is. But so often those four factors are forgotten and are not applied when we have a situation where we're dealing with consolidation. So in this case, the court looked at the two cases and said, look, if you're dealing with a rodent hole, trip and fall, you're dealing with a medical malpractice, completely different legal theories, it would be very prejudicial to the plaintiff in this case as the motion for consolidation was nine months after the note of issue was filed in the trip and fall, but discovery was still ongoing in the medical malpractice. In fact, very little discovery had gone forward. 
The court finally said this will be confusing and will cause an unwieldy type of litigation and trial where you've got all kinds of crazy different issues. You'll have one witness talking about a rodent hole and then you have an ER expert in. So the court decided that the trial judge acted appropriately, the IS judge acted appropriately, and the cases were kept separate.